I just felt like he was, you know, literally putting his ass on the line. And, you know, that's a big, big move for a guy who's taking this kind of very new risk in cinema. Yeah. I, uh, the real estate is unbelievable in that movie too. It's an underrated, if you're talking about the great real estate movies of all time, like some of the, the, the house that she lives in, mm-hmm. the apartment that he has, like it's like j- just very great Bay Area, old school, mm-hmm. pre SoCon Valley stuff. So when you, when, I mean, you did this before the book, but you wrote about it in the book, but you talked about how the whole no underwear thing, you didn't, you didn't really know that's how it was going to play out. And it seemed like people were shocked to hear that because that had been this iconic moment of the movie, right? Where it was like, not only in the movie itself, but in the selling of the movie, because this was the pre-internet era where you kind of heard rumors, oh, this this is a piece of it. I remember The Crying Game was another one like that, where it's like, there's this secret, there's this reveal, um, where you would guy, hear this buzz about that, right? And that guy in The Crying Game was amazing. Right. Amazing. Uh, and I was shocked that we haven't ever seen him in anything else. Jay Davidson. Didn't he? He got nominated for an Oscar, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with, with yours, you revealed like, yeah, I actually didn't know. Why did it take you so long to set the truth about how that played out? I don't think that it took me so long. It's just that this was the last and final time I was going to talk about it. Hmm. And that's it. That's it. Well, you talked about it. I'm done. You laid it out. I got it. <laughs> I got it out of my system. Well, so how are we supposed to feel about the movie now if you didn't if you didn't uh totally appreciate how that scene went down? I guess, I guess that's the complicated part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I still think it's a classic movie, but now I feel bad because there's that moment that you weren't it's happy complicated. about. Life is complicated, Bill. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, You're just going to have to do you and I'm going to do me. <laughs> 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 Tell me, you didn't talk about Sliver in the book. That was after you have the giant movie. Well, after you have the giant movie, there's always that next movie somebody can make when basically whatever they release, people are going to go see. Right. And so that was that. I actually think that movie would have been a better TV show. Oh, I, completely. It would have been a much better. It's like a good, a good Netflix show, right? I, I think I would have watched exactly. season one of Sliver. So exactly a good Netflix show. It's so exactly <laughs> a good Netflix show. And it could have been shot a little bit better to be that, you know, it could have been, it could have moved in on different things. It could have been, it just, to me, it lacked a little bit of that kind of finesse, that kind of, uh, shooting it in the technological way that it was. It, yeah. it wasn't really shot in um, in that demonstrative way that showed the technology of what they were trying to say. I just, yeah, if, you, uh, if you're I doing think, this as a TV show, each episode would be about somebody's apartment, right? And you would go into that apartment and yeah, you would be like voyeurs. Or, or two or three apartments that had some kind of story and intrigue among themselves, you know, all the different things that people did. Yeah, it's a great idea for a TV series. You were, were after Basic Instinct came out, were you single? Uh, no. Because you told a story about how you met, you were on one of the, I think it was, maybe it wasn't the Sliver set, it was one of those where you met the person you ended up with for the next couple of years, like the assistant director. Yes. Who you asked him out. Were yes. people afraid to ask you out after Basic Instinct? Um, I don't know about that, but we were in in a position where it wouldn't have been appropriate, I don't think, for him to ask me out because of the you know the there's a system, there's this awful class system, and right. you know it probably wouldn't have been okay for him to hit on me. But I'm just saying in general, like when you ran into people. Oh, weird. did you feel like there was a fear of almost like that movie, that character was so powerful that people were kind of like, yes, I don't I, even know how to talk to her. Well, yeah. And the people that did had some weird ideas about how to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they thought you were the character. I think that people for a long time thought I was the character. I think that I carried a lot of baggage because of that part. I think that people for a long time thought that I was like, and who, who? 
who in God's green earth is like that character? I mean, let's get real. This exists in somebody's imagination. And I hope to God, nobody is actually like that character. An ice pick novelist slash murderous. Yeah. 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 Um, let's, let's hope that's not who you run into on your daily basis. Well, you, we, it wasn't really until casino when I felt like you shed that where people realized you were actually an actress. No, <laughs> I, I know. It's weird to I, say it that way, but it's it's just true. No, it really was. It was like, oh my God, Sharon Stone, wow. Like everybody was so surprised by it that no, you were playing they, like this real character. I know. They just must have accidentally picked up like a ice pick wielding sociopath off the street. <laughs> One of the things I love about betting on basketball is I'm always finding new player props or game props that I like. And what's cool about FanDuel Sportsbook, you can combine these props with other bets from the same game. It's called a same game parlay bet. You can find them only on FanDuel. For instance, tonight, Portland is playing at Miami. Well, if Portland... It's going to beat Miami. You, odds are Damian Lillard's going to do well. Damian Lillard scores 30 plus points plus Portland to win. It's plus 340 on FanDuel right now. That is a great same game parlay. It's just one reason why I use FanDuel Sportsbook. Simple app to use. Great pricing. Always on promotions. And if you win, they get you. You're winning safely in as little as 24 hours. And if you haven't tried it yet, New users get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Just place a bet. FanDuel will refund you up to $1,000 back in site credit if you don't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and use promo code BS at sign up. Promo code BS must be 21 plus present in Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, West Virginia, or Virginia. First online real money wager only. Site credit non-withdrawable expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See sportsbook.fanduel.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700, Colorado. 800 bets off Iowa, 800 9 with in Indiana, 800 270 7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 800 Gambler in Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia. Tennessee red line is 800 889 9789 or visit 1800gambler.net in West Virginia. As a basketball fan, there's nothing better than a truly great surprise a buzzer beater, a big upset, a last minute trade, you name it. You also love a great surprise when it comes to your insurance rates with State Farm you can get the personalized service of a local agent for a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You had something in the book about De Niro. You were talking about all the nuances with how he gets involved Ugh. with a character and just like what a psycho he is about every little tiny detail. That's why he's such a great actor. What'd you pick up from him? That he's the most breathtakingly brilliant actor and it's like watching, I don't know, Michelangelo Payne. I mean, he's just, I mean, I, I'm completely infatuated with him. I mean, I just think he's absolutely hung the moon. I think that watching him act is, I don't know, like watching Barishnikov dance. I mean, they're just people who, and I have to say, <laughs> speaking of Barishnikov, just going completely off topic, um, when I got knighted in France, um, Barishnikov uh, picked me up at one point and set me up on the bar in this uh, restaurant that had a very high bar. And being picked up by Barishnikov was akin to acting with Bob. Wow. It's that moment where it's not like any other thing. It's just, it's just so different that it's almost hard to put into words. It's just a skill set. And, and a thing that's so different. It's just so different. I mean, acting with Bob is so different. It's so beautiful. It's so, it's so, it just makes you want to be so much better and so much. There's no time to be frantic about how's it going to go or am I okay or do I have it? You just want to throw yourself at being the very best you ever could be. It's like when Barishnikov picked me up, I'm like, I am light as a feather. <laughs> I, I am, I am ballet. I am moving in this air. It's like, there's just something that just the mere action of it makes you better. The, the mere actually just being near him makes you better. He made me much better than I ever could imagine that I would be. But you it, knew you could hang with him though. I decided that, yes, I could. 
yes, I could. Yes, I would. And yes, I was going to. Yeah. Because you can't, it's almost like sports. If you don't feel like you can match the other person, you're going to fail. I believe, I mean, I went to um, Monaco at one point um, for the Princess Grace Foundation. And we were doing like a whole, like a week of fundraising and all this stuff with a bunch of cool celebrities. And one of the things we were going to do one day was a baseball game. And Steve Garvey was there. And the night before, we were all at a cocktail party. And I'm like, Steve, I want to go down to the baseball field right now. And I want you to teach me how to hit a baseball. And he's like, right now? (laughs) I'm like, tell me that if you were in the room with Brando right now, you wouldn't be telling him, I want you to tell me something about acting. Yeah. I want to go down to the baseball field right now. And I want you to teach me how to hit a ball. So tomorrow I'm amazing. And he's like, let's go. And we went down to the field and we're, we're, we're working out. We're, we're just get warming up. We're hitting some balls and he taught me how to hit a ball and we hit a few balls. And before it was over, I hit a ball right out of the park. Really? And yes, because he really talked to me and I really understood exactly what he was saying. And he taught me about my breathing. He taught me exactly how to hold the bat. And then the last thing he said is, I know this is going to sound stupid, but be the ball. And I was like, that doesn't sound stupid to me at all. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm an actor. I understand exactly what you mean. And when he said, be the ball, man, I hit that ball. And the sound of that ball hitting that bat was the most extraordinary crack. I hit that ball and it went right out of the park. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this without you standing next to me. But I really do get it. And since then, I have loved nothing more than going to the batting cages. What? I get in there and I start, you know, I I, I can't hit the softballs anymore because like hitting yeah. a, a wet bag of sand, I can't take it. But I get in there and I start at like 40 miles an hour and I work my way up 50, 60, 70. And I love hitting a baseball because he really got in there with me and explained it to me in a way that made sense to me. Yeah. And it is. It's like sports. And to me, when I was prepping for Basic Instinct, you know, Magic was still playing basketball. And I, I was an obsessive Magic Johnson, still am, fan. And his no-look pass was everything to me, just understanding what that nature of that pass was, how it worked, how his team members worked with him, what he was actually doing. And so I based my whole performance in Basic Instinct on the no-look pass. And so all the time when we were just reading the script around the table, all the time when I was hanging out with Michael, I was just studying him and studying him and studying him because I was like, I'm going to do the no-look pass with Michael. Everything I'm going to do with him is going to be the no-look pass because I am like a stalker on him. And even when we were did the scene where I was in the, uh, I had a um, lie detector thing on. Yeah, I was actually on that lie detector machine, which was a real thing. And he was in a separate room on the same stage, but they were watching me live on the lie detector test. But it didn't matter because I had studied him so hard by then that I knew exactly where he was in the other room and I knew exactly what he was doing. So I could do the lie detector test and watch him blind from the other room because I had worked so hard on my no look pass to Michael. Mm that I literally could do the lie detector test and watch him simultaneously. And it was all by studying magic on the floor. Did did it freak him out? No. He loved it? I don't even know if he loved it because I was just in it. Yeah. I was in it to do it. And I'm sure he appreciated it because he was producing it, you know? (laughs) And he wanted it to work. Um, with Casino, you the Scorsese, De Niro, you're entering this, and those guys have made at least 
five movies together at that point.